Have we become the ultimate test? That's the question I want to ask today. Gary O'Neill said that Arsenal are the ultimate test. Let me get into the quote that he said. He said that he's impressed by Arsenal. I think they are excellent. Their Champions League and league position tells you exactly where they are. The two centre-backs they have are incredible physically and allow them to be unbelievable aggressive. It's probably the ultimate test in the Premier League at the moment, especially with a weekend group. Now, you can... Some people might um, interpret this in different ways, right? Different people might interpret different ways. Some people might say, okay... When he said ultimate, in my, in ultimate test, he, he perhaps mean that because um, perhaps these two are the best centre-back pairing in the league. He said ultimate test because it's in the same context where I use that. Some might say that he said that they're the ultimate test because they're on top of the league. Others might say that they're the ultimate test because of the way they've been defending and, and the, the way they've been controlling games. While others may say that they're the, uh, we are the ultimate test because we're the best team in the league right now. And we're the best team in uh, potentially Europe. Who knows? These are the different ideas. These are the different opinions that we can have off this one statement. Now, I believe what he says. right? And I believe that Arsenal is the ultimate test. That's what I believe. Now, I believe that he was also making reference to us being at the pinnacle the only team that i believe that can be compared or can compete with arsenal right now is manchester city liverpool might give us a good match but in terms of toe to toe in terms of blow to blow blow for blow i believe that manchester city is the closest so i so i understand and i agree with gary o'neill and for too long we've been compared to teams like Tottenham we've been compared to teams like Aston Villa now I'm not saying that these teams are bad but we we everyone knows that Arsenal is a top 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 club and if we're a top club we should be a, we should be competing with teams like Manchester City for for years we've been saying that Manchester City um is is basically a test to see where we are for years we've been saying that even Chelsea is a test to see that where we are um and now Teams are looking to us being a, a test, the ultimate test. A few seasons ago, we were looking to other teams as the ultimate test. So I'm not even going to lie. The, 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 the match that we played against City, I actually said that. I said that this would be the ultimate test. And I said that because I want to see where we are in our development. And when we beat City, that's when I know that there's a shift in the atmosphere. There's a shift in terms of the top quality t clubs in terms of the mentals of arsenal and the mentality of city city understand us to, to, to right now to be their closest rival and he's not even joking when they say they're a weakened team because they're very weak right now so i believe that we should win this match very comfortably we should be basically having a good scoreline leading by perhaps a huge margin and these are the reasons why. I'm going to get into the reasons. Make sure you follow along and leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think also. So follow along while I tell you my reasons why we should be winning comfortably against Wolves. Now, the first reason, Pedro Neto is injured. Now, well, he's a doubt. That's what, because uh, um, Gary O'Neill said he's back in training, but... It will, it's too early to play him this match and I don't believe nothing these managers said because I know lots of time Arteta said that listen this guy won't be able um, to play he's not back in time and then um, surprise surprise that guy is playing in the match and we see loads of manager does that over the year they keep doing these things to us um, trying to mess with our emotions but it's not just us as fans it's the individual managers like right? it's the opponents they're trying to get in the opponent's head by saying that this player is not ready he's not available he's not fit and then you start to make plans without that player and then surprise surprise he turns up and then break your your own plans up mash your own plans up but i know the artist is planning for these things because he would do that himself so you would expect someone else to try to do that to you so i know we might be making plans um for neto but we see that neto so far is ruled out and that's a big deal because neto is basically the biggest player the most valuable player and we can see that neto so far this season has seven assists which is number one is number one in assists for the whole season and that's more than Saka. Saka's got five. Salah has got five. Neto has got seven. So we see that Neto is going to be a big miss for them. So that's one of the reasons why I believe that we should win this match comfortably. Now, reason number two. Lamina is out and Gomez is out. Now, if you know Wolves team, you know that Lamina 
and Gomez are the two basically um, base. The base of their midfield are Lamina and Gomez, and they're both missing. They both got suspension, um, five um, 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 five yellow card suspension. So they're not going to be available for this match. So that's a that's a big reason. Lamina is one of the best defensive mid for me in the league in terms of the ball winning. He's brilliant at that. That's one of his, his, his main attributes. And Gomez is also very technically gifted. So these two being missing at the same time, I don't see how their midfield are going to be able to cope with Declan Rice. I can't see how Declan Rice is going to run riots on their midfield. But there's a possibility that Declan Rice could be kept back a bit. But that will, because Lamina wouldn't be playing, and Lamina is the one that normally breaks up the play for them. Lamina is not going to be playing, so Kai Havertz should be having a field day, as well as Declan Rice. Martin Odegaard should be having a field day, as well as Declan Rice. So our midfield, I believe that our success in this match, or how much goals we may score, determines on how our sentiment plays, how good they are. Depends on how, depend on how good our sentiments are. In terms of uh, um, Odegaard, Havertz, because uh, I believe Havertz is going to play, or if it's Trussard that play on that left, oh my gosh, if Trussard play on that left attacking midside, it's over for them. We perhaps win 5 6 no, again. Because Trussard is, is that type of player that do well in these matches when there's no good ball winners for the op uh, op opponents. But Havertz is also very good because that's a weakness of theirs. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But if Trussard plays, I'm sorry for them. So, it depends on Arteta. How does Arteta want to play? Does he want to be cruel? Or does he want to take his foot off the gas? It's, it depends. Whatever Arteta want to play, that's what that, that's it. If he plays Trossard, we're going to get a lot of goal. If we play Ovids, we're going to play more compact. We're going to be more defensive away. Plus, we're going to score a few goals. And Ovids might get a goal because so far he's got two and two. And he's got... He's, he's playing with confidence right now. So hopefully he should be getting a goal tomorrow as well. Another reason. So that's two reasons so far. This is a third reason is Norrie's out. And these, this is their um, left back, their left wing back. And we see that he's a very good wing back because even PSG, PSG has been linked with him that PSG wants to buy him. And we know that PSG only buy superstars or superstars in the making. So this guy, he's been performing very well for Wolves. And in being out, it's going to be a big miss for them. He's going to be a big miss for them because bear in mind, Wolves have beaten Man City 2-1 this season. And it's with with all these players. Wolves also beat Tottenham this season. The only player that wasn't involved in all those players I mentioned was um, Neto. Apart from Neto, um, Nori was playing. Um, Lamina was playing. And Gomez was playing. So now, Gomez is out. Neto is out. Lamina is out. And Nori is out. So these four players are out. These are the, one, four, the four of their best players in the team. And they're all out. So these are some of the reasons why I say that Arsenal should win this game comfortably. Now, based off the match that they played against Fulham and a few of their previous matches I've seen, they've got weakness. And their weakness is aerial ability. Right? They're weak in the air. When it comes down to defending their area, they're weak in the air. When it comes down to set plays, they're weak in the air. And that's one of the things that we've been improving on. We've got very tall players and we've been improving on that. And I believe that this we should take advantage of situations like this. I was set. I believe that our set um, piece coach is very good. So I know he'd be thinking of ways and how he can basically utilize this, these two players that we've got in the team. And we see people like Gabriel Jesus improving his edering. That match against Brentford, he had he made a superb run and done a superb header, keeper save. But the fact that he was in that position shows that he's improving. I see Jesus trying to improve because one of the reasons why I think that we we need a, a, a striker or a signing to win the Premier League, especially a striker, um, because we needed a goal scorer. We need someone to score goals, and we see that Jesus basically now is performing. He scored. He scored four in, in in Champions League now, and also he's been scoring in the Premier League of recent. So I believe that, oh, he's getting into goal scoring position, and he's getting a lot more chances or shots on target to score goals. It's only been unlucky a few times. So I believe that he's especially in headers. He's improving his heading abilities because that's one of the reasons why I believe I need a striker is because I need someone that's good in the air, good heading ability, as well as good finishing, fox in the box. And we see that Jesus is trying to be that fox in the box. The run he made against Bradford, for me, that's absolutely brilliant. That's that's someone like, I would say, Osman. That's a run Osman would make. That's a run Arland would make. 
and Gabriel Jesus is making an in and out run basically getting onto the end of the ball yes he should have done better with Edda but the fact that he was in that position the fact that he was jumping for that ball and he had a shot on target by Edda shows me that he's improving he's willing to improve and I see the same thing with Zinchenko I was going to say I was I would be worried because we see that I believe that Belgrave um Bel Belgrave Belgard or um basically that player that plays for um, Wolves I think he's a right winger or he's a center mid or someone that plays on the right hand side I believe he's very good that he was the one that set up the first goal for Wolves against Fulham he done that right that left back he done him cut him inside out chop him and then cross it in for Edda from Kuna so I believe that that guy is good and I was worried about Zinchenko, but then I started to remember Zinchenko has been very good so far. And it's, it's the same as Jesus. He realized that he was not good enough defensively and he's been working at it. You could see the match against Bradford, you could see that he played very well. And not just that, for the past few matches, I've been realized that Zinchenko has been defended very, very good. He's been one of our best defenders in the past few matches. And that's not something that we would normally liken to Zinchenko. We would say that, yes, he's good going forward, but defensively, uh, he's shaky. But for the past few matches, he's been solid. He's been absolutely solid. The match against Brentford, he's the one that kept out a goal. The goal was going in, and he slid on the line, kept out a goal. So I believe that he's improving. And if everyone in our team can have that mentality, and this is it, that Zinchenko came in to lead us being one of the most experienced players in the team Gabriel Jesus came to lead us and now I see that they're taking the team to a next level in terms of determination in terms of zeal in terms of effort they're the one that's leading the line in terms of improvement they see that they're not good enough and they try they're trying to improve and so far it's been working I see a different dynamics, a different dimension to how we've been playing since Gabriel Jesus came back into the team. And I see him starting to play like his old self before he got injured the first time. He's starting to play like when he just signed for Arsenal. The same as Zinchenko. I love to see this in my team because if we play like this, we don't need another striker to win the league. I believe that we, what we have is sufficient to win the league if they continue to play like this and not just to play like this, but to improve in their weak areas. I believe this team is good enough to even win the Champions League. Now I say that to say this that we should not we should not take them for granted, right? We should not take Wolves for granted because as what I said before that they've beaten Manchester City, they've beaten Tottenham. Albeit it's a it's a better team than what we're going to be facing tomorrow. But this is it that sometimes when Arsenal play against the smaller teams or weaker teams, it's like we take it for granted. We take we take our foot off the gas and then they then they take the game to us and then basically winning the game are we hanging on for a draw or them hanging on for a draw but then we lose points at the end of the day. Now against Fulham I watched that match and they were a bit shaky in terms of defense but one of the reason being Dawson was out and we see that Dawson is going to be back for this match and for me, I was hoping that he wouldn't be back, but he's going to be back for this match because he's, I think he was serving suspension and now he's back for this match. So they're going to be better in terms of defense. So Jesus has to be contending with Dawson in this match. Even though I think he can, Dawson is a very good defender, a very good experienced defender that knows his way around the block. So Gabriel Jesus has to be in top form tomorrow. That's if he plays, but I think he's going to be playing anyways. Another reason why I say that we should be wary of these guys, there are two attacking players, Huang, is top top quality if you take a look at his stats so far this season yeah if you take a look at Huang's stats this season he's got seven goals he's got more goals than our highest goal score seven goals now he's not injured he's not suspended he's going to be playing tomorrow and he's very quick he's very agile and this is it that is very fast he's, he's got pace and he's good on the break so gabriel jesus is gonna have to be worried because he plays on Gab um, gabriel magalhas is gonna have to be worried because he plays on gabriel magalhas side so he's, he's number six when it comes down to goals and assists he's got nine goals and assists so you, you see that this guy is very good he scores and he assists as well he's on the same level as song right and we, the only player we've got there is Bakaya Saka. And it's because Bakaya Saka has more assists than him. That's why Bakaya Saka is up there. But he's even ahead of Saka because he scored more goals. And goals are more important than assists. So this guy, we should not take Wolves for granted because this guy, he can just show up anytime. All he needs is a chance to score and he will score because he's that clinical. He's a clean stri strike of the ball. 
against Fulham, he hit the crossbar in the first half. That should have been a goal. It was a clean strike from outside the box. He's a very, very good striker. I have to give him ratings. Now, it's not just him. We have to remember Kuna. Now, Kuna, when you check his stats, he's number three in terms of successful dribblers. Under Doku, which we know Doku is a fantastic dribbler. Beneath Eze, watch, once again, Eze is a fantastic dribbler. Then we've got Kuna. With a 2.4 um, dribbling successful rate per match, which is a 53%. That's a very, very, very high standard. Because no one in our team is on that level. Not even Sako. We recognize Sako as a very good dribbler. We recognize Martinelli as a very good dribbler. Trossard, Jesus, none of our players are on this list. Much less to be in top three. So we see that they've got a good dynamic working for them. They've got Kuna, which is a very good dribbler that dribbles and then pass to um huang 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 is a very good finisher so this is why they've been gelling this is why they've been performing so well because of two and they play with two attackers two strikers so so for me we should not take our foot off the gas we should strangle them strangle them from the midfield strangle them from the from the back lines try like close them down pressure from the get-go, we should not take this team for granted because if we do, we're going to be punished. Now, to take a look on the formation, um, this is it that I believe that Declan Rice. So, starting from the starting from the centre backs, this is why I say that if you see the red arrow, this is for um, Chang, um, Huang. Huang is going to be basically on this side for Gabriel Magalhaes, and then Kuna is going to be on Saliba. So, we see that um, why he beat Saliba in terms of dribbling and pace. Um, on, 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 on Wednesday night, so Kuna could be watching that thinking, yeah, I might have a go at him. Do you know what I mean? But Saliba needs to be on form. He needs to be on point. Um, so this is it that they two are going to be attacking our two centre-backs. So they're not going to... Our two centre-backs is going to basically be under pressure. So I believe that Declan should be sitting to cover these two, right? Declan should be sitting there. So that will now allow Martin Odegaard and Kai Havertz or Trussell, whoever play on that left, left um, attacking mid, left side and uh, attacking mid, I believe that they should be attacking the centre mid, which would be possibly um, Traore or Doyle or um, Belgard, Belgardi. I believe that these two, our two players should be attacking the midfield. Leave Samedo, leave Doherty, because guess what? Gabriel Magalhaes should be targeting behind Dawson right there. If he's targeting that side, then it's going to pull back Samedo and it's going to pull Dawson to him. And, and the soccer should be targeting that space behind Totti Gomez. If he does, then he's going to pull Matt Doherty, um, Doherty to him and Gomez. So then, what's going to happen? Jesus is going to be left one-on-one -on -one with Kilman. And I believe that's, a, that's, that's danger. That's dangerous. Because we see against Brentford, Jesus basically hold the ball up brilliantly. I see his hold-up play against Brentford was very, very good. His hold-up play against um, uh, um, Lenz and Wednesday night was absolutely phenomenal. This is why he got the man of the One of the reasons why he got the man of the match. So, to say that Gabriel J if they isolate, if they um, if Gabriel Magalhaes pulled two defenders and Saka pulled two defenders, then and isolate Kilman, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a bloodbath for them. Now, if that happens, that will leave Zinchenko free. And I don't believe Benjamin White is going to be playing. I think Tamiyasu will be playing on that wing. So if that happens, that's going to leave Tamiyasu free and Zinchenko free. And as we can see in previous matches, that Zinchenko is a hub for a team, meaning passes flow through him and passes flow from him. The same thing with Declan Rice, the same thing with Tamiyasu. All three that play um, attacking roles across the line. So Zinchenko is going to go up into Kai Havertz position where he is right now. Um, Tomius is going to go up into Odegaard position where he is right now. And these three are going to play together. They're going to play both are going to play together with Declan Rice and make a three in midfield. And all these three players are going to be the hub of our team. Meaning they're going to be doing the most passes and receiving the most passes in between all these three of them. So this is going to be an effective way. To defeat them now i know that we're going to do lots of aerial balls i know that because previous matches we've been increasing in that and that's going to be confusing the opponents because they don't know how we're going to attack they don't know where the attack is coming from because if they try to defend the aerial balls then that will give martinelli and saka and odegaard chances to basically dribble as well as feed balls behind do reverse passes and feed balls behind the back line to gabriel J or taking even odegaard taking shots outside the box so if he's not closed down so we've got different ways of playing and this is what i like to see when we've got different different ways to play they don't know if we're going to dribble past a few plays they don't know if we're going to chip the ball over the top they don't know if we're going to go down the byline and cross they don't know how because if Kaha 
Havertz playing the team, that's another player that's good aerially. And Kai Havertz has been improving in his headers recently. I see in the match against Brentford, he had a, a very good header that only just went wide. Only a smidget went wide. He scored a header against Brentford. He also had a header in the previous match. So, that would almost scored. So, this is it. That Kai Havertz is very good in the, his aerial ability. is very good and we should make use of that. So, my prediction for this match, I predict the scoreline will be 4-1. 4-1. I believe that um, Huang is going to get on the score sheet. Hopefully not. Hopefully we, we keep a clean sheet and keep that defensive record building stronger. But I believe that it's, it's going to be 4-1. I believe Huang is, Huang is going to get a goal for them. I believe that Saka is going to score and assist. <laughs> I believe that uh, um, Havertz is going to get a goal. I believe that Martelly also might get a goal. See, he got a, a goal in the week. That could be uh, a very encouraging for him, you know, to get another one. I don't know who else will score. Perhaps it's, it will be a defender. Perhaps it might be another karate kick from um, from um, Zinchenko. So who knows? But that's the video there. And then, guys, make sure you leave your prediction in the, in, in, in the comment below. Catch you in the next video. Goodbye.